okay, we should receive something on the taxes that Brooks County would be receiving. Application number 12122, special exception request by Morgan Solar LLC for a large scale solar energy system in an agricultural zoning district consisting of 940.3 acres on a portion of 11 land parcels, which includes five land owners along Thief Road, Guest Road, Lawson Pond Road. And balance the highway 122. <coughs> now, based on because I had found out that, uh, or someone had let me know that everyone thought this was a personal thing of mine, and I just would like to say I don't care. It's not personal. I have to follow the laws of the zoning procedure board. And based off of the six questions we have to answer for special exception in zoning, for the OCGA law 36673, those examples. And there's six questions that have to be answered. First question is whether the zoning proposal will permit a use that is suitable in view of the uses and development of the adjacent and nearby properties. The proposed use is not suitable for the development in the area. The use will impact 23 neighboring properties. Where the zoning proposal will adversely affect the existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby properties. According to the applicant's submitted documentation, there is 127.5 acres of jurisdictional wetlands and 10.75 non-jurisdictional. There is concern related to the maintenance during and after construction on the property as well as on 18 drainage basins as well as the threatened and candidate species to the property for which the mitigation plan has not been submitted for the removal of the return of these species. Of course, we have gotten something in today. The panels themselves do not make noise, but the transformers and inverters make a buzzing sound. Based on the weather, some days are worse than others. Number three, whether the property is affected by the zoning proposal has a reasonable economic use as currently zoned. The current zoning has a reasonable economic use for crops, pasture land, and or rural residential. Due to what the applicant submitted of the 952 acres, proposed zoning solar is 782 acres is considered to be prime farmland per the Federal Register or farmland of statewide importance. The applicant is proposing to clear 121.9 acres of timber and we have gotten in something on the um, tree survey from them about that. Number four. Whether the zoning proposal will result in a use which will or could cause an excessive or burdensome use of existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools. <coughs> Staff does believe there will be an, uh, an excessive use on existing roads, especially on Pinch Road due to it being a dirt road during construction and on Guest Road and Loss of Pond Road due to them being collector roads that stretches from Lowndes County southwest into Brooks County. They are rather busy roadways that provide a rural residential route from I-75 and Highway 122 west of Hayhara to Highway 133 east of Morgan. Number five, if the local government has an adopted land use plan, whether the zoning proposal is in conformity with the 
policies and the intent of those land use plans. The Brooks County 2027 Comprehensive Plan that you all adopted and the future character area, the solar farm is not compliant with the objectives to protect farmland and the rural lifestyle of the agricultural district. There are no excuses. Number six, whether there are other existing or changing conditions affecting the use and the development of the property, which gives supporting grounds for either approval or disapproval of the zoning proposal. There are no existing or changing conditions affecting the use and the development of the proposed property. There will not be any permanent jobs for any Brooks County citizens. There are planning commission, as you all know. Planning commission voted three to one to approve with the conditions that a road maintenance agreement be put in place with the county, <clears throat> erosion measures provided, and filtration plants in the retention ponds. And as I said, your attorney received the road maintenance agreement for you all to agree upon, and Ms. Michaela with Pinegate has addressed the filtration plants for the retention ponds. Staff, however, <clears throat> recommended Due to the concern of the amount of prime farmland, the quantity of jurisdictional well wetlands, the threatened and candidate species potential impacts, and the amount of access roads because the parcels are not contiguous, <coughs> that it is not <coughs> it is not consistent with the 2027 comprehensive plan. You have got 10 different places with the objections to protect your farmland and the rural lifestyle in the Ag District. I'll be glad to answer any questions you all might have. Was, was all the conditions you had by that according to the solar ordinance that's in place? Yes, ma'am, they have been. All conditions have been met. As of what we received today, which were some of the concerns of the citizens at the Planning Commission meeting, they did meet everything they were required to meet. Um, I did not know until at the Planning Commission meeting they did not receive a soil and an erosion permit, a file permit, until they have county approval. So, Alyssa and I have sat down, we went through, and we checked them off one by one. So they haven't had all of the conditions. You said our council received the guidelines, uh, right? From Pine uh, Gate? Yes, ma'am. Miss Kim, I believe I sent the email to her, and she made copies and made sure they were put in your package. Should have six. It's not in your book. We didn't receive it until this morning. Yes, sir. We're in the thousand pages. I can't answer that, sir. What you were saying today? Yes. If I understand correctly, the road use agreement is not in there. It was just sent to me today to review, and I haven't had the opportunity to look at it yet. What I do know is uh, from their council is it's a, of a similar form that they have used on other projects that has been acceptable at least to Pine Gate. Right. So, Commissioner <coughs> Larkin, this is the six. I do believe of the six that were approved by the Planning Commission. Okay. I just want to make sure that you're. And there's the way Planning Commission. As, as we're considering this. So you haven't been able to look over the Burgess Agreement to ensure that this actually will work for us. I just want to make sure that when we're listening to this and looking at this, that 
this document is, is actually applicable. So I want to make sure that it's good. So is there a way you can look at it? Let me say, according to their attorney, mm -hmm. this is one that Pine Gate has negotiated or has used with other solar projects. Okay. And um, it was their understanding that all of that would be put into place at the time the special exception was approved, that they would sit down with the attorney mm -hmm. as well as the commissioners to go over each one of those documents. Yeah. Chairman, and it would be subject to review by council and commissioners after, if this special exception is granted, then that will seek further approval. Well, the special exception was is, is to be granted upon the condition being met, so I want to make sure that the condition is met. As for our, as for our council, I mean, I, I just want to be diligent about it. Well, like I said, some of those things that are in the solar ordinance where the DNS plan or pool plan is supposed to be submitted ahead of time, those cannot be obtained through EPD until they get approval. Right. Right. So based off of that, so can the road uh, maintenance agreement. But what was the wording in the passage of, of this special exception? <laughs> when, when the special exception was, was given, what was the motion, the wording of the motion? The motion was to approve it based off of a road maintenance agreement as well as an erosion and sedimentation plan. Okay. So based upon that, have those been fulfilled, both of those items? Don't think it has not has been the erosion and sedimentation plan. So a road agreement has been turned in to your attorney to look at it. And our attorney has not been able to look at that yet. And the erosion agreement the erosion can't be done until so the motion is actually flawed because it was passed upon the condition. If that condition can't be met, I want to make sure. Is that right? Chairman, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I understand where you're coming I, from. I want to make sure we're all above board on everything we're doing. Right, but the Planning and Zoning Board is making a recommendation to you, and so their recommendation to this board is to approve subject to those conditions, and that's what they recommend. This board can take action it sees fit. So, to speak to the road use agreement, which I would never, you know, want to opine on in real time, um, the way we've handled this in the past is, if this board were to approve, you can approve and add conditions, and one of those conditions being a mutually agreed upon road use agreement. And if that condition is not met, it doesn't move forward. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does Melissa have anything? She's here for my board support. The developmental 